Hello and welcome to Real Recollections, the mini edition. For this week's mini we're going to be ranking the Golden Age and Silver Age Disney movies against each other. It's the top 10, minus 101 Dalmatians, because technically it's debatable whether it's in the Silver Age. It could be in the Bronze Age slash Dark Ages. Yeah, plus it would make it 11, which <sighs> is unacceptable. Three syllables, not snappy. No, ten. thank you. 11. No. Gotta have 10. Top 10. Top 10. Can you give me your, your best trailer voice? Today, we are bringing you the world's next greatest <laughs> top 10 podcast <laughs> in a world devoid of top 10 lists. <laughs> we are bringing you the epitome <laughs> of the top 10 lists. It's ab- we're absolutely not in a world that is lacking in any top 10 lists. Most of my Google searches are like, top 10, <laughs> best of all, blah, blah, blah. Which Zodiac are you? Ba- wait, no. Which character are you based on your Zodiac? That's the other one that there's a billion of. Oh. Like, which of the Avatar The Last Airbender characters are you based on your Zodiac? Oh. Mm-hmm. I know. And it feels see. like... It's final, the way they say it. Like, that's it's who like, you are. You are this. Because that's the month you were born in. I've never felt like a Scorpio. There you go. I know. What am I? I'm like a I don't, I don't cheese remember. ball or something like that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's Scorpio. And Gemini. And then there's cheese ball. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was what it was. <laughs> we don't. I am a Sachi. Sagittarius? Sagittarius, I think. Just call me Terry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or Sag. Or apparently tea- cheese ball. <laughs> how about how about we move on? How about, <laughs> how about we move on from this subject of which we know almost nothing about? And how about we talk about what we're going to do today? Should we? No. Let's talk about some other stuff first. Jonah, how is your hair feeling today? <laughs> My hair feels fine. <laughs> Why did you even bring it up? <laughs> Don't talk. Can we change, change the subject? <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> so today, me and Jonah have come up with lists of our favorite. So we're going to go from like 10 being the worst, right? Up yeah. to number one. So how do you want to do this? Do you want to do it like you tell me your list, I tell you mine? Or do we go 10, 10? I think we go 10, oh, nine, 10, nine. 9, 9, 9. Okay. And then we I just argue we a bunch. Do it. First, I think uh, we should share the word counts of our lists. <laughs> Why? So th- my the my word count is eighteen. Okay, wait. Um, one hundred and eight characters. So okay, let's see. That eighteen is the exact amount of number of <laughs> letters. I have a hundred and thirty-one. 131. And words. 724 characters. Wow. Yes. So. 593 excluding spaces. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Good it's only like 20 more words, Joda. No, it's like 100 more words. I Is only it? have 18 words. Are you serious? Yeah. I only have oh my gosh. Words. Well, I had to write down the names of the things, plus the numbers, plus my criteria, and a short reason why I put the film there. Well, I think that's all very well and good. (laughs) My guess is you just put the title, or a shortened title. And so forth, and what have you. And what have you. (laughs) But let's start. Let's start. So, number ten. Number ten. The worst (laughs) film. (laughs) Of the no, Golden no. and Silver so, Ages. That sounds so bad. I feel like <laughs> nervous to share. I know. I'm like, oh no, what is it? What, what did I rank last? We did not, this? we didn't share our list with each other beforehand. So we're going to surprise each other if, with what we say. It feels meaner than what our podcast is to, you know, say what the worst is. But let's think of it's it. It's just the worst to us. I mean, we could be completely <sighs> bonkers. Yeah. Honestly. Honestly, probably are. After this podcast, you guys should all write us angry emails to about tell us why we were wrong, how terrible our lists were, so that we know that we you're won't there. even be mad because <laughs> 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 we're like they felt 
something enough about our podcast to write us an angry email. So that's Seriously. great. <laughs> okay, I feel like we're stalling now. Okay, all right. Do we just like say it at once, or yeah, do okay, I just ready? on three? <laughs> okay, wait, wait. When you say on three, is wait, it one okay, two? Geez. We say it, or one two three? We say it. One two, and we say it because it's on. Three. Okay, on okay. three. Sorry, I never sure about that. All right, ready? Okay. One, one two, two Fantasia. Peter Pan. <laughs> oh, I understand dis- your reasoning. In a disagreement, yeah. Is it because of the racism? It's because of the racism. It was very uncomfortable for me to it watch. It was very in, jarring in many parts, and part of the reason why it was so hard to watch was because it. I had such fond memories of it from when I was a child, and See, it was yeah. That's I, why it made it higher up my list. Oh, okay. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. So even though it has a couple of really good moments, I feel like. Overall, it really doesn't overcome that sense of, yeah. Cringiness? The cringiness. The cringy factor? Yeah. Well, my criteria well. here was watchability. Well. And, like, did I feel, like, a sense of, like, the magic of watching it before or, like, childhood or just, like, you know, that good feeling you get when you're watching something good? Um, and I felt like Fantasia had the least of that for me. Like, I don't feel like I would watch it again. You know gotcha. what I mean? And I didn't really have, like, a that moment. There, I had a moment that got me. Right. I was trying to think of something that I had a strong emotion about in Fantasia, and I didn't really have one. I I get that. Yeah. So that's why it's number 10 for me, even though I felt like I was betraying Aaron the whole time I was writing it. Dang it. And I moved it a bunch of times, but that's where it ended up. So what you're saying is your list has already betrayed one, one member of the, of the one family. Of, one of the people that you love the most. <laughs> it's getting real here. And great on job. Real recollections. Great job. Man. We've already talked about betrayal and racism in the first ten minutes. I so hope we're you're on happy <laughs> with what you've done. Which, with what has happened. Okay. All right. Nine. Ready? Nine. Okay, you go first. I go first. Dumbo. I put Dumbo too. Oh, high, high five. five. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Do it again. They're doing go. it left handed, so. Yeah, that was impressive with your right you left also, You were doing we were both, we were both doing, doing their left, left hands. hands. Oh my you gosh. can't hold your phone with your left hand. That's dangerous. <laughs> it really is, though. I already lose control of my phone all the time with my right hand. Like, I'll just be walking and all of a sudden, <laughs> it's out of my hand. So oh, it has a strong Dumbo? case. Um, because, like, I'm just not that interested in rewatching it. No. And I fell asleep, like, three times. Ten minutes or less from the ending. To me, the reason it was number nine rather than ten was just because, like, I love those scenes with Dumbo and his mom. Yeah. Because those are so sweet. And, like, the baby mind scene, beautiful. But, like, the rest of the movie feels a bit more cartoonish. And to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of, like, the circus thing. Really? Yeah, it just feels... Circus is kind of scary. Like, I remember when I was someone, when I was a kid, we went to, like, Barnum and Bailey's Circus at one point. It just feels like it there's feels a like dark side. There's, it's like, the something. animals, and I like, like, the kind of Cirque du Soleil type thing with, like, the acrobatics <clears throat> is, I think, really cool. But, like, I don't know, something about, like, old circus culture. I want to like it, but there's something weird about it. But that might just be from my one experience with Barnum and Bailey, where, like, they let me hold a baby lion, or, like, we paid to let me hold a baby lion. That's pretty cool. It was. <laughs> Joe was, <laughs> was like, I don't understand. I don't know why I didn't get that experience. <laughs> but I just remember that should be, like, a really cool experience for a kid. And But, but instead, like I was holding the baby lion, and I knew he didn't want me to hold him. And so it made me uncomfortable and kind of sad. Oh, that is sad. Because, like, there was a whole line of them, of people, like, waiting to hold the baby lion to take a picture. And I was like, this baby lion doesn't want to be held. <laughs> It's like Take that day, I, it was my ninth birthday, and I woke up and I saw a Great Dane out my window, mm-hmm. and I loved dogs, mm-hmm. and I especially loved big dogs at the time, and I was like, Great Danes are the coolest dog in the world. Yeah. And it was like a dream. I woke up and I saw it out there. It was like 7 a.m. I never wake up at 7 a.m. I was like, I have to go out. Great Danes s- is like uh, Scooby-Doo, right? Yeah. Okay. I was like, I have to go out and see this dog. And so I ran mm-hmm. outside my house, and I was like... Mm-hmm. Hi, puppy. Come here. And it ran. And it was probably just being overly friendly. But it jumped yeah. up on me. But it's huge. Right. So it knocked me over. And honestly, oh my gosh. I was like, I was crushed. 
<laughs> no. Literally and figuratively. Exactly. Exactly. I was crushed. Anyways. Yeah, it kind of killed your dream. It was about Great Danes. I just imagined it being this super magical moment, you know? And instead it was more painful and, exactly. like, scary. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, Jonah. Yeah. To redo your ninth birthday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Number eight? Um, Number eight. I know we're not going to have the same one on this one. Because okay. I put Fantasia. Oh, I see. I put Alice in Wonderland. Okay, I get that. Yeah. It's just like that great of a story. I personally really enjoyed parts of it just because I'm kind of weird and I I love the idea of Alice in Wonderland. It's part yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes, Alice in Wonderland is the next one for me. So mm-hmm. it was like right there. You know okay, I mean? okay. I bet Peter Pan is next for you? No. I'm where, sorry, Peter Pan is the higher. Okay, I it was my favorite movie in childhood. Okay, I have reasons. Oh no. <laughs> Anyways, I put Fantasia because it's the movie that I also fell asleep in many, yes. many times. So obviously it didn't like hook me. Uh but I put it higher than Dumbo uh because of the amazing music that that's in it. Yeah. I really do feel like the music is amazing. It, in there and then also the um innovation in okay. the animation i get that which i felt was also i decided not to take that into account just because i was like yeah that played gonna do it. that played a much bigger part in my reasonings yeah i get that kind no, of in a more it historical wasn't the context main factor. it wasn't the main factor but i definitely considered it like how much did this impact future films I mean, like, the that fairies Disney are going to affect all the fairies later in exactly. Magic and Disney and things like that. No, I get that. Yeah. No. Totally. If I had considered innovation, I think it would have been higher. Yep. Um, well, I already told you my next one, which is Alice in Wonderland. Mine is Bambi. You put Bambi below Kay. Peter Pan. Here's my thing. I just I'm don't... judging you right now. I know. I just don't like <laughs> Bambi. I'm sorry. I never liked it. I didn't um. like it that much when I was a kid. The only reason it's this high on the list is because I love Thumper. But to me, like, I just don't like the realism. Well, it's not even that yuck, realistic. Yuck, yuck. I mean, it's realistic in that, like, <laughs> they tried to make them anatomically just, correct. No, I just mean, so, like, like, it has, like, a more... <clears throat> I don't know why I have something like this. It just has more, like, a realistic sort of melancholy point of view of the world. That, like, real... People always are like, oh, it's more real. You know what I mean? Not realistic, yeah. but like more real, and like the feelings and the things that happened. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> Bambi's much higher up on my list. I bet it is. I felt a little guilty when I put it there, but when I was consulting like whether I would watch it again, it I was, was like, you put no. Bambi bottom five, but that's also what, top ten. That's what, <laughs> top ten in the ten movies that we've covered so far. I know. I'm just saying there are others that I'm that's sure is later. That's what Disney's favorite film he made. There are some beautiful scenes in it, which is why it's where it is. With Thumper and like, I can't think of any other Flower. The Flower. S- the scene where he jumps over the log. And I like know. It's the great. I love those scenes, but that's not like, those scenes aren't like the heart of the film. They're not the point oh of gosh. the film. I'm a little upset right now. <laughs> Don't be upset at me. I can have my feelings too. <laughs> but for me, that's where Bambi would feel. I just don't like it that much. I'm okay. sorry. It's okay. I just don't like Bambi, like the character okay. that much. Well, I put Alice in Wonderland as seven. You did? Honestly, now I'm sort of feeling like maybe I should switch. Anyways, it doesn't matter. But I sort of feel like it should maybe go below Fantasia and Dumbo for me, so maybe that's my new nine, and then Fantasia would be my new seven, and Dumbo would be eight. Now that I'm rethinking it, because... Like, what the heck? Alice in Wonderland? That, <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. And there were so many songs in them, but, like, nobody remembers any of them except for the White Rabbit. Like, I'm, I'm late! late. I'm, I'm late. late! For a and very important date! And nobody can even recall the melody for that one. <laughs> no, they're just like kind of pretending stuff. But I, I did love the world that uh, Mary Blair had created for Alice in Wonderland. I agree, me too. So I love 
I guess I love the idea of Alice in Wonderland more than I actually like the movie. Yeah. Which I feel like is kind of how the animators felt about it, too. I get that. And I love the Mad Hatter scene. And yes. the Queen of Hearts scene. I mean, the Mad Hatter scene is perfect. That scene is marvelous. It's just so good. And all the stuff with the Cheshire Cat. Mm-hmm. Just golden. That's why it was so high up on my list, That too. stuff is great. I really, I had a harder time with the bottom ones than the top ones for me. Mm. So the next one for number you six. is... Number six. We're on number six now, right? Yeah, number six. Number six. Number six. six. Sleeping Beauty. I put Peter Pan here. Okay. Honestly, I thought there would be more outrage from you. And I, said <laughs> I am a little outraged, but it's fine. I'm just going to hold it in here. No, we're just kidding. Well, I can get where maybe you're coming from, but tell me your reasoning. Okay. I put Sleeping Beauty as number six because <laughs> I feel like all, I like the stories of all the movies I put above Sleeping Beauty more. Okay. Um, Sleeping Beauty is beautiful. Yes. The music is excellent. True. But the story just doesn't connect to me. To you. Very much. I get that. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Like, there's not very much I can say that's not good about Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. It's like, it's fine. It's just preference just, for you at this I point? I just don't feel that connected to it. Mm-hmm. Well, I put Peter Pan here, but I have to defend myself a little. I realize that it's racist. But you have to understand that it's now number six, whereas in my memory, Peter Pan was number one. Okay. So it fell a long ways from Grace, okay? But I will say, even upon rewatching, I laughed out loud and at things in Peter Pan and at various parts. I just enjoyed the ver- the good parts more than the good parts of the other films. Right. Like Tinkerbell and the the Tinkerbell. relationship between Smee and Captain Smee Hook. Smee and Captain Hook kill me. They're so funny. So honestly, it was probably then. And I like the relationship between Wendy and Peter Pan as well. Yeah. So like all the not cringy parts, I just love so much. And like the part where like Peter Pan um, tries to save Tinkerbell after everything explodes and stuff. And like just some of those parts. And just Neverland in general, the whole idea of it. I just can't their other ones didn't capture Mary's heart quite the same way. I hope it is never done in the way it was done ever again. Ever again? <laughs> but is erase it. But um but I do love some of those parts so much. I can understand that. Thank you. <laughs> I can understand that. So should we move to number five? Number five what's yours? You go first. I went first last time. <laughs> okay. Lady and the Tramp. Oh, okay. What's yours? Bambi. Bambi. Okay. We were going to be wrong, different on that one. Yeah. I was like, you were going to be wrong on that one, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I put Bambi as number five. And even though the, the I feel like the story maybe didn't reach me as much as the ones above this, like, the movie is... So beautiful, and when his mom dies, it really is devastating. You know, it is. and so that's why it's lower on my list. <laughs> well, that's why it's higher Real. on my list. It's like it really the, Bambi really makes you feel something, but not that only that it makes you think about life and like the circle of life. You yep, know, yep, yep. About like what we're putting into it and what we get out right. of it. Right, and you, you know? kind of leave with this. This hanging sense of melancholy, which you didn't expect from a Disney film, right? But, you things, know, things aren't set <laughs> right again afterwards. No, you know? uh, nothing is set all the way right, which I understand. I can nothing really appreciate. Right. It just like Bambi. starts again. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I do feel that I would like Bambi better if I had a stronger connection to Bambi the character. Yeah, I I get that. I just feel like the story doesn't try to. It's strange because it is so emotional, but it doesn't try to manipulate you. And it also, also doesn't manipulate the plot to, like, get things done. You know what I mean? It's also not really that into relationships. Other than between, like, Thumper and Bambi and Flower, there's not really a lot of, like, relationships that are driving the story. Except for Bambi and his mom. 
guess. But even their relationship isn't super, like, explored. Like, what would you say, what is Bambi's mom like? She's nice. She's protective. Motherly. motherly. Just like the way she's laying there, you can just tell she's a good mom. No, yes, you can tell she's a good mom, but, like, I feel like their relationship, I'm not like, oh, that's a unique mother-son relationship that stands out. Yes. Yes. But about what you're saying. Yes. Too. I also understand what I do saying. like his mom, to be clear. But yeah. So, Lady and the Tramp. Lady and the Tramp. So this one for me, again, I think this kind of like you said, I liked all the stories from here on out. It's just about preference. So I really think they did a really good job building the world of Lady and the Tramp. Um, and I love all the stuff with Lady and the Tramp and Lady mm-hmm. and her human family. I think it got lower on the list mostly because I just really don't like that pound scene. I don't know what it is about it. It bores me <laughs> to tears and it just That's loses so me. Funny. It loses me in that part a little bit. Maybe it's the barking dog scene. Maybe. Thing. I just, um, and like, I feel like it needs a little extra like emotional mm at the end. I just don't get that punch. That right. what I maybe would have, would have gotten with, like, the death of the dog. Or with even just, like, a moment where, like, Lady's like, oh, I was wrong about you, or something like that, you know? And Tramp apologizes or something. Like, it didn't fully do, like, the romance thing. But it kind of Right. Did, you know? Do you feel like that's partially because they're like, how do we, like... Because if it were a live-action film, and they're like, I was all wrong about you, you know? They would, like, have this dramatic speech, and then they'd make out. Right? Okay, yeah. But, like, how do you do that with dogs? I don't know. But I feel like I really got into the love story of, like, Pongo and Perdita in, like, less than a fourth of the time. Like, I believed yeah. Pongo and Perdita loved That's each true. other. That's true. And that they really cared about one another. Whereas Lady and the Tramp, I kind of got, the, like, the little flirting and the start of it. But I didn't really go into, like, oh, I can see why they would be perfect for each other for the rest of their lives. Like, they didn't. They didn't change one another. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So I it didn't pack the emotional punch at the end to make it higher on the list for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my next one is Lady and the Tramp. Lady so and the Tramp? Okay. It was like right there. So you put it as five. I put it as four. I put Snow White. Okay. As four. Okay. I was honestly surprised Snow White made it so high on my list. But as I kept thinking about it, it kept climbing the list higher and higher. I just enjoyed it so much when I, I rewatched it. It was a really magical experience to watch that one. It again. was. So that, but yeah, because that, the There are so many great gags. Yes. And it's really in a way, it's like the last of its kind because it's still kind of Airing on that, you know, cartoon, short, early Disney feel, feel, like, but full, full animation. And yeah. it was the and it first took itself, of so many things. It took itself really seriously, I think. Don't you? Yeah. Like, it was like, yeah, we are a full length movie and we have this thing to say. And it's very, like, theatrical with, like, the birds. It's and it's the first so time. theatrical. Honestly, well, I guess Sleeping Beauty talks to, I guess they all talk to animals. All that princesses. But like I feel like Snow White's that special breed of like she sings and talks to the animals and they clean the house and you know what I mean? Like it just like yeah. started this whole Disney thing and yeah. it's just really fun watching it. Absolutely. And then Grumpy and Dopey, that just hits you right in the heart. I know. They were really great. And that's why it's higher on my list. <laughs> and that's why uh I also love, of course, um the Queen is so good too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I put Lady in the Tramp. Um, for number three? For number four. Yeah. For number four. Okay. And that's because I feel like it has so many iconic scenes in it. Yeah. Well, you've, you've you just really so talked much. about how much you didn't like it and why you put it as number five. But now I'm going to talk about all the reasons why it should be on your top five. <laughs> golden Age. Which I'll probably even agree with you. Because, I mean, it did make it to the top five. On. There are so many moments in Lady and the Tramp that anyone would recognize. Even if they were done with humans. With, yeah. Or in a different... In a totally different yeah. scene. Like, there's the spaghetti scene. And not even just, and, like, the spaghetti, like, 
chewing to each other. Just the idea of like this, you have to almost like have a first date in some Italian restaurant. Exactly. Even like a little bit of a dive bar kind of feel, you know what I mean? Like a little bit, it doesn't but have like, to be fancy. You know the owner. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Checkered, checkered tablecloths. Like there's just, yeah. And then the scene when they're on top of the hill and it's just so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And they're looking down and it's just like a dream. And I also loved the world. Yeah. That it's set in. Like, turn of the century, the world's yes. about to change. Yes. I love movies time set period. In, in that time period. Me too. It's like, There's everyone, not that many. Everyone dresses nice still. And it's like, people care about It's a little simple, but also a little themselves. bit like, ooh, anything can happen and every day. it just seems like, I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't this way, but when I imagine it, it just seems like a very optimistic time, especially yeah. for people in America. It's like, we can do anything. Right. And I know that for many other people, it wasn't that way at that time. But but I think that was kind of the cultural thing in Western cultures where they were like, we can do anything. Like, all these technologies yeah. were starting to happen. Kind of like the 50s. You can have a tele... Tel- I mean, you can have a telephone in your home, you know? Yeah, exactly. Contact people from across the world. People were making new inventions all the time, and... Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. So it's time of innovation in that way. Cars. <laughs> in a world. <laughs> so, anyways. So, Lady and the Tramp is pretty magical to me. And plus, it focuses on dogs. So, and like, it has to be a high to list. So, it has to be... You, it, it had to have made it pretty high on my yeah, list. You know it what did. I mean? So, yep. Okay, number three. I put Snow White. I put Sleeping Beauty. Top three. Top three. You surprised Sleeping Beauty didn't make it higher? I was. <laughs> Aaron was surprised. <laughs> well, I understand your top two because I bet they're the same as mine. They probably are since we haven't talked about them. But yeah, I I put Sleeping Beauty as three because I personally very much connect to uh the story i well it's very romantic to me it is one of the most romantic in the most romantic way like in the way that like it's not realistic it's like they met in the forest they dance they sang they're in love and you just kind of get swept away in it and even though you know it's not realistic it's like fun to feel just go with it the feeling of it kind of like willie reiterman when he's like you don't have to know how he gets through the thorns it's almost like you don't have to know how they fell in love you just know that they did you know what i mean i i get that i totally get why this would be number three on your list or number one on some people's list and it's so beautiful with the scenery and i always thought that sleeping beauty was like to me she was one of the most beautiful princesses yeah she's gorgeous yeah she's really pretty and um and as we've discussed, I just really like Prince Philip. So that helps it yep. be high on the list as well. I love his hero's journey as well. That like he fights for her. Yeah. And against the dragon. And it has a genuinely scary villain who like is not... I, I like villains like Maleficent. Because yeah. I'm, I don't know, a scary person. But I like it when they're like devious and smart. Yeah. I don't really like the villains who are like, I'm going to beat you. With your strength. And I yeah. also think it's scary when they're like, I'm not just going to kill you. I'm going to make you sad. And I'm like, oh, that's scary. Yeah. And so, yeah. I get that. So I put Snow White as number three because um, it was hilarious. It was really funny. But it was also terrifying. It was also sweet. And it was also sweet. <laughs> like the scene where the dwarves take off their hats. Yes. And they start crying. Oh my God. And you're like... These are dwarves. They're not supposed to be crying about Why am I crying? Just met, you know? <laughs> uh, and there's just so many... There's just so many things. And the turtle. <laughs> what turtle, Joe? I don't remember any turtle. The turtle. He's what turtle? so funny. <laughs> he's in the cleaning scene. No, I know. He's in the scene saying. where they're, <laughs> the dwarves <laughs> are coming <laughs> back <laughs> into <laughs> the... Yeah, exactly. The turtle's hilarious. And I... I know I'm going to be slammed for this, but I actually like uh, the villain in Snow White more than I like Maleficent. Really? Yeah. Explain your reasoning. Just, Maleficent is so powerful. Okay. So then, like... Maybe her the- defeat doesn't feel justified. Yeah, and it's like the battle at the end is so grand, so there's so much pageantry. It's kind of like Sauron, honestly, where it's like, oh, and he's... 
But like yeah. you never really anyway, but I kind of get what you're saying. Yeah, whereas in Snow White, it seems like she has to be a little bit more cunning. And yeah. so it feels more dangerous because it feels like that could happen a I little get, bit more. I get that. You know what I mean? I think that Snow White Snow White definitely feels more like a real person villain. Whereas like Sleeping Beauty almost takes everything to like the higher plane of like literal mm -hmm. good against evil, powers of hell against the powers of good. You know what I mean? And so yeah. it's like very much like cut and dry, good, evil. Blech. Yeah. And then also, I like that there are more songs than Snow, Snow White. Yes, I do and too. I like almost, I actually I like all the songs in Snow White. I do too. They really, I think it was really just by chance because... I mean, they tried to have songs that moved the story along. Yeah. But they didn't get, like, the best songwriters like they did later. No. Or Cinderella or anything. So it was yeah. kind of just, like, they just happened to write a whole bunch of great songs. You know what yeah. I mean? So. Totally. And I think that those songs are really iconic still. Like, Whistle While You Work. And it's crazy that the first animated film they ever made, like, it has to have an emotional impact. Because even though it was the first one they ever made... It's, you know, it stood the test of time. Like, people still showed it to us. Yeah. You know? At least, well, what was it? 30s? 50 years then? At least 50 years passed when it came out. Right? Mm, yeah. Did it come like, out 39? More like 60. Well, yeah, but I'm saying at least 50. Yeah, at like, least 50. At least 50 years after it came out, we still were shown it by our parents. Like, how many movies from that time period get that kind yeah. of totally. um, yeah they're still in the parades at disneyland they're still you know what i mean yeah. like yeah so it's crazy for me snow white was definitely top three yeah well i discovered that surprisingly to well me. you put as number four actually did it yeah yep yeah. but still like it's up there it's up there yeah yeah i get it yeah. Okay. I bet I our think, number two I is different. Should... Oh, you think so? Oh. Yeah, I bet our number two is different. Oh, no. You put Sorry. Pinocchio as number two. I put Pinocchio as number two. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> now you, you betrayed me. <laughs> you betrayed both of your brothers. Both your brothers in one podcast. I knew Pinocchio would be number one for you, but like, um, emotionally, sorry, Cinderella beats it. Oh, my gosh. I cried when we talked about Cinderella. <laughs> I teared up a little, Joma. But Pinocchio is number two. That's super high. So I think we can talk about both of these because Pinocchio yeah. is my number one. Mary's Cinderella's, number two. Yeah. Cinderella's my number two. Cinderella's Mary's number one. one. Yes. Okay. Here's my reason why I put Cinderella below, below, below Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Okay. Give it a shot. Pinocchio... <laughs> She's upset, too. It's okay, Ruth. <laughs> I know. Mary's wrong. No, I Come think here. she's upset that you're wrong. Cinderella's no, she came to me Look, she's first. coming to me. But it's because you reached she's out still, to she's her. She's still coming to me. She's trying to come to me. <laughs> <laughs> she's literally not. trying to pull her away. And Ruth's like, she, I she don't understand what's first, happening. And then she knew that you would feel bad. And no. she was on with that. So... She's just trying to make you feel better for making <laughs> sure, the sure, wrong sure. choices. Plus, her head is resting on my knee. And on my foot. <laughs> Knees are greater than feet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways. Anyways. Here's my reasoning. Okay. okay. I'm listening. Cinderella is a story about a dysfunctional family and how it never works out. And that you need some prince to come and save you but i disagree with everything you just said continue <laughs> pinocchio, <laughs> it, pinocchio is a story okay i was kind of exaggerating that about cinderella. <laughs> i really do feel like cinderella is actually actually takes a lot of action to uh -huh. help herself to get out of that situation anyway though it's fine keep going pinocchio is about a dysfunctional family uh -huh. That even though, like, they're making a bunch of mistakes, they still love each other so much. And when Pinocchio and Geppetto come together at the very end of the movie, 
It took my breath away. I was crying. It was amazing. He's fishing and he fishes up Pinocchio. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Father! And he's like, one minute, one minute, one minute. And he's like, Father! And he's like, Pinocchio! And then he goes and he picks him up and he's like, around. Uh, It's a good scene. And Pinocchio is so rich in the uh, artist department. Mm -hmm. Like, the part with the clocks and the part with... Yeah, it's really beautiful. And Stromboli, I don't know why I love him so much, but I just do as a villain. Right. It's, I mean, all the animators agree. It's the most perfect animated film that Disney Mm -hmm. made. And it really, like, even even watching the later films, so when we watched the Cinderella? No, sorry, Sleeping Beauty. When we watched the Sleeping Beauty making of, they showed a clip from Pinocchio. That clip where they come in through the um, town. And it was still breathtaking. Even, like, watching all these scenes that they have from the new Sleeping Beauty, which is several years later, right? It was still breathtaking to look at that animation. It was so beautiful. Yeah. And they took so much time and effort. And when you wish upon a star is in it. Exactly. That was my next point. (laughs) Pinocchio, Pinocchio's theme is the theme that will set the tone for the rest of the Disney movies. It is true that that's what plays usually when the and if it's not the music of the actual movie beginning, they play when you were the one, right? Yep. Na, 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 Mary, na. <laughs> when you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who, who you, you are. are. The words are beautiful. Anything <laughs> your heart desires will come to you. <laughs> Joe, Joe just getting me with his eyes and like emotion right just, now. Just like let. Okay, sit on that for a minute, you know. Let's talk of sleep uh Cinderella just a little bit, shall we? <laughs> okay. Okay. They're both great. Obviously, they're the top but two. They're the top two. It was hard to decide between the, them. Those two were like obviously, those are my top two. Yeah. Yeah. That was like uh, immediately I was like, well, my top one I think is Cinderella or P- Pinocchio. Yeah. It's one of the two. For me, Cinderella just has those are kind of moments. Everyone loves Cinderella story. I mean, yeah. they've told it in almost every single way possible. Cinderella in high school with emails and texting. You know what I mean? Cinderella story. They have a Cinderella where she's like a dancer or something. Yeah. There's just like a bunch of different kinds of Cinderella story. Ever after. Um, oh, Cinderella man. Rocky is practically a Cinderella story. You know, it's the story of the guy or girl who's down on their luck who... The the cards are stacked against them, and against all odds, they make it out. Yeah. Um, through their goodness, or through and through their hard work, you know, they're able to make a way out with their friends. And I think that's one of the cool things for me about Cinderella is that she works her hardest, and then it's her friends and the people around her who see her as so good, um, who help her make it that little extra bit of grace. Yeah. You know it's what I mean? really like um, to where she needs to be. Uh, oh my goodness, it's a wonderful life. Yeah, kind of story where he's good to all these people, and then when he's down on his luck, they all come together like as a community, right, to pull him out. You and know to what me, I mean? like the stepmother is so iconic as a villain. She's very scary again because she is a little bit more on the real side, I guess. Like I believe that woman could exist. And the yeah. way she goes about everything. And that scene, I, I don't know why, but this was one of the deciding factors for me. That scene where Jacques and Gus take the key up the stairs. Oh, yeah. And it just seems like this absolutely impossible task for these two little mice. And did yet... Willie Willie Reiterman do that as well? Yeah, he did. Yeah, seems like he would. And yet... And you just feel it. And I it was one of the few films that like I felt found myself like as a adult still like yelling at the tv going like come on you can make it just go Uh, go 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 well and here's the thing is cinderella deserves it so love her and not that you have to earn that because no nobody deserves to be in the situation that cinderella was in but no it's just like oh you gotta get her out of there you know yes she's trying so hard um and so that really gets to me. And 
like as a girl, I just love the idea of her walking into the ballroom and Prince sees her across the room. That's a magical scene. Too. It's very magical and wonderful. Um, but yeah, I just love Cinderella. Like the character Cinderella. As a protagonist, I think she's one of the ones I care the most about. Yeah. If I think through the all the films that we've done so far, Pinocchio and Cinderella are the two that I care the most about. And I love the story of the voice actress for Cinderella. Yeah. Because it feels very much like a Cinderella, a Cinderella story. story. She's like so unassuming. And then yeah. she, Cinder- she gets cast as Cinderella. And, then, and the music in that film is so good too. Also very good. A dream good. is your wish, your heart makes when you're fast asleep. So good. Yeah. Uh, a dream that you wish will come true. <laughs> yep. But yep. it's kind of ripping off. Pinocchio. Because <laughs> Pinocchio did that Dreams first. and wishes. It's all part of the same campaign. Wishes! <laughs> Best firework show. Best one. Gang come true. Mm. But, um, yes. but that's for me why Cinderella is the top. Okay, I would also say of all the movies in the Golden and Silver Ages, yeah. Cinderella has the best villain. For me. For you? S- Stepmother is the best villain? I can get that. Yeah, if I were to write villains, she I mean, to me, the top three villains are plays those mind games. You know, yes. when Cinderella comes down and she's dressed in that beautiful thing, and there's something very vulnerable about when a woman walks down the stairs for the first time, all dressed up, and like maybe she doesn't do this very often. They believe that and, they look beautiful, but, but they, they don't just... know it yet because nobody's told them yet. Yeah. But they are beautiful, and they come. She comes down. And the stepmother looks at her and she says, Cinderella, where did you get those beads? They're beautiful. I know. She like plays into what Cinderella wants to hear, but she says it in exactly the way that you never want to hear. Right. And she's clearly doing it to get the stepsisters to take control for her. So she's not only manipulating Cinderella, she's manipulating her own daughters. And then... The way that they filmed that part afterwards, where she cries and the the animals are watching her. Oh, but and they like go into the garden. Too sad for them to even go and comfort her. They're like, oh my gosh, we don't she know what just to needs say. Space, and they have that continuous yeah. filming of her running into the garden. I know. And the part where um, and she cries when she locks her in her attic, and she's like, because like Cinderella, she's only cried twice in this movie. Once when, like, they've literally torn up her mother's dress, the last the vestiges of her came no, together to... to remake. And so they've just really torn up her dress. And the second time she cries is when she's had this glimmer of hope, like something she can actually get out of this. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and then she's locked in the tower. The way she cries gets me every time. Yeah. And she's like asking. I don't think she ever like asks her stepmother for anything. She's like, no, please don't. And also, there's just nothing better than the moment where she's like, oh, well, see, I have the other slipper. Yeah. And she takes it out of chills. her pocket. Chills every time. Chills. <laughs> chills. Okay. Well, I think we both made the right choices putting Cinderella and Pinocchio in Me our too. top two. Yeah. Definitely. So I wouldn't. About- I wouldn't change that. Even rethinking everything else. No. After going through all of them again, I was like, oh, maybe I would have changed a few things, like at the bottom, you know? Yeah, it's hard at the bottom. I don't know why. It's easier to think of the favorites than to go like, yeah, that one's lower than this one or whatever. But yeah, I also want to, I went a lot on rewatchability, like whether I would ever rewatch it again. Should we just quickly go through, because going through it so slow, it might be hard for people okay. to really catch. So I'm going to, I'm going to say mine really fast. So, 10 Fantasia, 9 Dumbo, 8 Alice in Wonderland, 7 Bambi, 6 Peter Pan, 5 Lady in the Tramp, which maybe Peter Pan should be lower upon rethinking it, but just that's my uh, 5 Lady in the Tramp, 4 Snow White, 3 Sleeping Beauty, 2 Pinocchio, 1 Cinderella. All right, and mine is 10 Peter Pan, then Dumbo, 8 Fantasia, 7 Alice in Wonderland. I feel like I should lay down a beat underneath Six, or something. 6 Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Five, Bambi. Four, Lady and the Tramp. Three, Snow White. Two, Cinderella. And number one, 
Pinocchio. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. <laughs> I know it was good. It's been fun to to do this so far. So I'm yeah. excited to keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine a lot more like top ten minisodes in our far in our distant future. Far distant you know? future, etc. Like in a several months from now. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like once we get towards the end of all of the Disney movies, we can be like, oh, here are the villains ranked or yeah. princesses ranked, you know? So we would love to hear from you guys what your top three are. Yeah. Or just your top one. What is your top favorite out of the ones we've done so far or out of all the Disney movies? Just let us know. What's your favorite? Why? Defend it. Tell us why it's what up. Yeah, tell us why we're wrong. Tell us why we're wrong. Tell us why we're right, also, if you want. <laughs> I feel like nobody's that motivated to be like, you are so right. But I feel like a lot more people are like, you are so wrong. At least on the <laughs> this internet, is my favorite. you know what I mean? Yes, I want to know about the time that you watched whatever Sleeping Beauty every day for a year when you were six years old or whatever. Let us know your stories. We would love to have them. I think it's so fun to be able to share them like we shared Wade's story. Yeah. Yeah. But even stories just about how, like, Aaron jumped into the glass table when he was a kid saying, I can fly, I can fly, I can fly. You know what I mean? Like, I think those stories are so fun and just a reminder of how movies kind of connect us and also, um, you know, inspire us through our lives. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, it makes no difference who you are. Any dreams can come true. Yeah. We love you guys. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Bye.